Here's time from 2021 to 2022. Human trafficking in Idaho jumped 271%, a staggering number. But that data from Idaho's Uniform Crime Report only includes the trafficking cases the investigators know about. Stopping sex trafficking, the illegal movement of people for the purpose of sex exploitation, is a top priority for law enforcement agencies right now. But it's not just the cops who want more attention on this topic. In fact, there's an event tonight that wants to highlight how prevalent this crime here is in Idaho. And Joe Paris, you spoke to those organizers. I did, and I want to be very clear. There's a lot of organizations that are taking on uh, this problem, but we're just going to highlight one of them, and really because of dangerous statistics that we're going to share with you. A 2021 National Human Trafficking Hotline report, for example, from the state of Idaho, the data, it shows that sex trafficking is the most prevalent accounting for 78% of all trafficking cases. And statistics like that are why groups like Idaho COBS, Community Outreach Behavior behavioral services, they're hosting community education events about trafficking and they're trying to fight child trafficking in your neighborhood. And that is the title of their event that they're hosting tonight in Nampa. It's something that organizers admit is uncomfortable to talk about. What do you know about human trafficking? Does it happen here? Is it common? National data collected by Polaris in 2021 showed 10,359 situations of human trafficking were reported to the United States National Human Trafficking Hotline, and that includes 16,554 individual victims. A window into Idaho specifically. The Idaho Anti-Trafficking Coalition says they aided 115 individuals in just the first six months of 2022. More than half of those people are survivors of sex trafficking. But experts say data like that only covers a portion of reality. Well, it's a lot more common than people realize, which is why it's such an epidemic right now. Paula Barthelmus is the crisis director and founder of Idaho COBS, a group that works closely with survivors of sex trafficking in the Treasure Valley. We do have a trafficking belt, which is I-84, um, but that is not the main number of our victims and survivors. Our main population are native Idahoans, so they live here. Um, Idaho has the largest population of familial trafficking. That's the biggest demographic of the individuals that we work with. Familial is where we are selling our own kids. We're selling our own kids, our own grandkids, our boyfriends, girlfriends, our husbands, wives, our grandchildren for a benefit, for money, for housing, for gas, especially in this economy. Paula and the Cobbs team are very busy working with new survivors on a regular basis. Just an example, yesterday I met with four new victims, two adults and two children, two adolescent girls in just one day. In the last 30 days, I've probably met with 35 to 45 brand new victims that I've never had contact with. Connecting with survivors is an opportunity to help. We provide resources, we feed, house, take care of their medical needs, all the things, we keep them safe. There is also an opportunity for the community to learn about the reality of what is happening, an uncomfortable truth. And it's not a shame thing, and so pe that people that don't understand that it's happening, it's not to be shame or guilted, it's to help us help you, because it is happening. It's happening in every neighborhood. It's socioeconomic, there's no discrimination. Trafficking has no discrimination. Tuesday evening, Cobbs is set to host a special education event, Fighting Child Trafficking in Your Neighborhood, 6 p.m. at Good News Community Church in Nampa. Major focus, keeping Idaho kids safe from aggressive predators, many who prey on kids online. They're fast, they're, they're convoluted with predators, with traffickers, because every single person that they draw in brings money. It's their product, they're not even a child, they're not a girl, a boy, a husband, a wife, a son and daughter, they're a product. So of course, this isn't a new problem to Idaho or the United States, but there is renewed interest in it. And Brian, uh, one of the things that organizers and a lot of uh, organizations are talking about not the politics of it, but The Sound of Freedom, the movie about mm -hmm. sex trafficking. And that is an example of international sex trafficking, which is a problem and it is something that happens. But movies like that, movies like Taken, those are Hollywood examples of these really high level, big organizational, you know, massive conspiracies. There's also things happening in our own backyard here in the Treasure Valley that start as very simple things. A high schooler gets involved in what they think is maybe just trading sex for drugs and they don't see that as sex trafficking. But that's one thing that leads to another. So it is is a very serious topic and there's a lot of nuance to it. I think it might open a few eyes when she mentions the familial aspect of that and the localization of that. People selling them, as you said, just for everyday items they may need because they, well, they need it, but and, that's the way they handle it. And a lot of uh, the victims and survivors that groups like Cobbs will talk with, they'll find women that say, well, you know, I was just working in prostitution. Well, that's still part of sex trafficking and women that get trapped in those situations. Men right. as well, by the way. True. Goes both ways. Thanks, Joe.